reading by the sea. Reading by the sea. But today we're by a lake. Hi guys, welcome back to Reading by the Sea. Uh, today we're going to be reading this book. What do you guys think it says? It says, what do you do with an idea? What do you do with an idea? Written by Kobe Yamada, illustrated by May Besson. Besson. Maria and I, and actually her daddy Jonathan, uh, we all found this book in Monterey while we were walking along the boardwalk. What do you do with an idea is the name of the book. We're going to read this on the couch over here. Today, you guys, we're coming to you live from Arizona. All right, let's read. Move this glass over for a second. Okay. Maria was just eating and she was about to fall asleep and she didn't. So I thought, what a great opportunity to read with you guys. So what do you do with an idea? Written by Kobe Amada, illustri illustrated by May Bensal. For Shale and Ever, For Shale and Ever, always remember a single idea can change everything. Yeah. With thanks to my friends who always support me in my work, May this song. For Shale and Ever, always remember a single idea can change everything, Dad. With thanks to my friends, who always support me in my work, May Besson. What do you do with an idea? One day, I had an idea. Where did it come from? Why is it here? I wondered. What do you do with an idea? At first, I didn't think much of it. It seemed kind of strange and fragile. I didn't know what to do with it. So I just walked away from it. I acted like it didn't belong to me, but it followed me. I worried what others would think. What would people say about my idea? I kept it to myself. I hid it away and didn't talk about it. I tried to act like everything was the same as it was before my idea showed up. But there was something magical about my idea. I had to admit, I felt better and happier when it was around. It wanted food. It wanted to play. Actually, it wanted a lot of attention. It grew bigger and we became friends. I showed it to other people, even though I was afraid of what they would say. I was afraid that if people saw it, they would laugh at it. I was afraid they would think it was silly. And many of them did. They said it was no good. They said it was too weird. They said it was a waste of time and that it would never become anything. Dun, dun, dun. And at first, I believed them. I actually thought about giving up on my idea. I almost listened to them. But then I realized, what do they really know? This is my idea, I thought. No one knows it like I do. And it's okay if it's different and weird and maybe a little crazy. I decided to protect it, to care for it. I fed it good food. I worked with it. I played with it. But most of all, I gave it my attention. And a giant snowman. 
My idea grew and grew, and so did my love for it. I built it a new house, one with an open roof, where it could look up at the stars, a place where it could be safe to dream. I liked being with my idea. It made me feel more alive, like I could do anything. It encouraged me to think big, and then to think bigger. It shared its secrets with me. It showed me how to walk on my hands, because, it said, it is good to have the ability to see things differently. It shared its secrets with me. It showed me how to walk on my hands because it said, it is good to have the ability to see things differently. I couldn't imagine my life without it. Then one day, something amazing happened. My idea changed right before my very eyes. It spread its wings, took flight, and burst into the sky. Woo! I don't know how to describe it, but it went from being here to being everywhere. It wasn't just a part of me anymore. It was now a part of everything. And then I realized, what do you do with an idea? You change the world. Thank you guys so much for reading by the sea with me, Aria's mommy, Eva, and Johnny. We appreciate you guys so much. Tune in next week for another reading by the sea. Reading by the sea. Bye. <laughs>